Hello, welcome to Turn It Up. I'm quite nervous introducing this man, our great Australian hero, Heston Russell. Now, I've got to read out your show, rap sheet. Take a breath, we're going to take a long. <laughs> Peacekeeping operations in East Timor, four combat operational deployments, Afghanistan and the Middle East. Served in the 2nd Commando Regiment. You led the best of the best into battle. You've worked alongside the United States Special Forces. You've served in Iraq as a Special Operations Leader. And since, since discharging, you've become a voice for Australian veterans through a number of different platforms. Welcome, Esther Thank Russell. You so much. Said, a so, true Australian legend. I say, it's so surreal to be sitting here with the uh, NRL legends of my generation. <laughs> and I, I mean that. It's, I put you guys on the platform since I was a young teenage boy. So thanks for providing that early inspiration in my life. We just found out you're a Queenslander, so you've gone yeah. from there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, born in, born New, South in New South Wales, Wales, Wales but I grew yeah, up in yeah, Queensland. Yeah. So. Anzac Day, what's it mean to you? Anzac Day is, is massive for me. I feel we get it wrong in Australia because everyone thinks it's always just about commemorating um, those that have fallen. That's Remembrance Day, but Anzac Day for me is actually about tapping back into that Anzac spirit that was forged by those young Australian men on the shores of Gallipoli, who, for me, the, the true test of their character was that the enemy they fought against still to this day have built monuments and commemorate the way in which they fought against our guys. And I think that message of fighting and doing combat in a way that you draw the respect from your adversary is really such an important thing that this year I really want to focus on. And I know many within the sporting arena, it's something we need to focus on getting back to that respect. Well, as a player, and you try to get yourself into a headspace because you learn a bit about the Anzacs during the week leading into the game. And, yeah. you know, I think we see rugby league as a tough game, but then we don't compare it to going to war. Uh, what's the difference between obviously running out and playing in a really tough game where you can hurt yourself into doing what you did in going out, protecting your country and understanding that your life is on the line. How do you get to that level? I think, for, for, first and foremost, there are so many similarities between the two. And the biggest one for me is being willing to put your body on the line. I think there's so much that we can talk about and write emails and have the gift of the gab, but when you actually put your physical body on the line for a cause that you believe in, for me, that's that true cohesion between footy and, and the military. Mm. I think it's the same for me. It, every time I was in combat, I never worried about my own safety. I always worried about my guys and my team. And you really had this sort of force field around you. That's that sort of proactive resilience that comes from that teamwork, that camaraderie, that mateship. And I think the difference is just um, mindset and task, you know, knowing that you're going to go into battle and ultimately need to take life if need be, but you're there to protect life. And then, you know, we're just literally assigned the mission, mate. Your job is to go over there. We, as the soldiers and officers, don't decide the battlefields we go to. We don't decide, you know, where the team plays on the weekend. That's the coaching staff, that's the strategy, and that's those above. Anzac Day starts with the, the remembrance at, at, at the dawn service, yeah. uh, and then it goes into the entertainment of sporting events, whether it be AFL, uh, the NRL. Do you, do you like how it's celebrated and that's a, that's a part of what Anzac Day is? Absolutely. I think it's about bringing the community together with purpose and that morning commemoration, because that's when you know, those young guys storm the shores at Gallipoli and being uncomfortable, getting up early, being cold, particularly if you're down here in the south, mm. and taking time out of your day, which is the greatest resource we have, and then coming together to celebrate tribes in conflict, which is ultimately what combat is, mm. and doing so watching people perform themselves and push themselves in the pursuit of excellence. It really has so much great cohesion. South Sydney won the competition in 2014, huge in rugby league. Yep. You were involved in their build-up. Yeah. Talk about that. It was a bit, I actually took over as the adjutant of two commander at the end of 2013 and along came the new Rabbitohs coach and team and we put them through a three-day smash session out at two commando at Holsworthy and then throughout that year we touched base and went and did some leadership training with their senior players, went out and did some more smash PT session and really formed this amazing bond uh, of culture and support with them. And I was saying before, so impressed by that coach. He built that all up. How did you find the players? Because you've obviously trained with mm. soldiers and special forces. Mm. How, how did you find the character of the South Sydney players? Uh, really impressive. And uh, it's sort of part of what I think is missing these days. There wasn't, was, there wasn't anyone who said, no, I'm not doing this, it's not in my contract. Um, which I'd done some work with another team beforehand and there were a few superstars who were a bit like that. Freddie? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was gone before. I'm not mentioning any of that. way before uh, you were doing and that. Look, that. That person's actually left rugby and been in a lot of trouble and you sort of got yeah. to see those character traits flow through and I got to see that teamwork, that cohesion and 
that purpose that was the team and the mission before self. And that's why I really believe that they were such a champion team because of that off the field culture. Talking about character traits, were, were there any parallels that, that you saw at South Sydney and their run to that premiership and what you experienced in, in your team going into battle? Absolutely. I mean, the core army values when I joined were courage, initiative, teamwork and respect. And those were the four core values that I really saw carried by that. And particularly it's that teamwork mm. side of the house um, and the courage that comes from that physical courage out there on the field. But I think I also saw a lot of moral courage off the field. I think it's very easy to put other players and people on pedestals, but the junior players were willing to speak up um, and, you know, check and hold the senior players accountable. And the senior players were willing to listen to and hear that. And I wasn't used to seeing that. You know, the military, there's hierarchies and all these sorts of things. But that sort of 360 degree mutual egalitarianism was really impressive to see. Now in rugby league, a review of a game is pretty crucial. You sit around and there's some, the good teams do it very well and there's hard, hard truths. Yep. What's it like going into battle and like you said, you go away and you, you got, um, you know, you got something to do over there. What's it like when you come back and you sit down and everyone has to talk about it? How yeah. does that process go? Absolutely, and it's a very deliberate process. When we come back from every mission, it's quickly put down your gear, uh, get some food and water and then meet in the platoon room and go through a full debrief. And everyone's equals in there. And we embrace failure because that's how we learn. For me as a platoon commander, I was the youngest person in my platoon when I took it over. And all of my senior soldiers had been over there on multiple deployments. But my expertise was leadership and planning. And so my job is to sit down and listen and, you know, you're sort of like a coach captain on, on the field. And I learn so much from my soldiers and my leadership is better because of my soldiers and junior commanders. And just all those eyes and ears on the field, that's that initiative piece. You've got all these people out there as your human senses bringing back the information we need. You're with your, your gang, where you're talking about your group and the men, and you spoke about the word trust. Yeah. And you are on the battlefield. Yep. And that adrenaline and your life's in each other's hands yeah. and then it stops. Yeah. The transition from being in the army, the special forces, yeah. and then going back to being a civilian. Yeah. How hard is that transition? Because in rugby league we have a few players that commit suicide because it's so hard to adjust. Now, we all went through it and yeah. I had a horrendous time for yeah. 18 months. Yeah. What's the transition like? Yeah, it's, it's terrible. Um, August 2020, I sat in my apartment in Sydney and planned how I was going to take my own life. And that came from receiving a call from another one of my guys who tried to kill himself. I've lost more soldiers to suicide back in Australia than I did in combat. And it's not from, um, you know, depression or anxiety. It comes from a place of struggling for relevance. I say I went from being in the most, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, self-actualized state of flow, leading and thinking I was never going to be hurt in combat to my biggest responsibility being to take my sausage dog for a walk each day. And it's just slowing down and not feeling relevant and struggling to find purpose and not having built a community around me outside of the military um, that we really need to improve in that transition process. So do you fill your life with little bits of adrenaline like you used to get out of serving or do you try to go the other way and practise more calm and try to rid that of your life? Well, the biggest thing I've learned from a personal physiological level is that my nervous system has literally evolved from being in combat. I perform at my best, probably like you guys do, when you're in threat, when you're in danger, when you're in chaos. My body runs off dopamine and endorphins, and what I struggle to do is form connections outside of transactional purpose, and I actually need to fill my life with things that deregulate me, you know? Yoga, Pilates, all this low-intensity stuff instead of the high-intensity stuff I do, and I need to find tribe find time to connect with my tribe, with the rest of my friends, to have that flow of oxytocin and serotonin that my nervous system struggles to produce. And building that into a routine as opposed to just piecemeal reactive, being proactive about it. You've had that relationship with South Sydney in the past. Yeah. Have, is that something that you would look to do in the future? Is if find I, yourself with a, another elite team? I, I'd love to. If, if someone watching this wanted to give me a job travelling <laughs> around to teams, I intend on going to the Olympics to support my mate Harry Garside as he wins gold. Mm. You know, I'm excellent at sitting back, watching, observing, and just going over to the person who's a bit quiet and inside their head and just having a conversation of why they're holding themselves back. Because the difference between high performance and elite is mindset, not skill set. Mm. And we're too often the only ones in our own way.
what you're doing now with your own charity with the veterans. Tell us about that and yeah. where people can, can look at that. Absolutely. So when I had my suicidal ideation and I decided that I was going to be the one to read my own death letter, we campaigned and won the Royal Commission into Veteran Suicide that's on at the moment. And I formed the charity called Veteran Support Force, vsf.org.au. And one of the key findings that came out of the Royal Commission interim report was that the key components affecting mental health are uh, loss of identity, loss of purpose and loss of community. So we set about developing the veteran games. We had our first inaugural game last year and it's veterans requiring to reach out, form a team of eight and then come together to compete in things like an obstacle course, a casualty evacuation scenario. We assess them on teamwork, time and, and technique and they don't know the events until they turn up to it. And um, we know we had our fundraising event last night here in Sydney. We played the video that's online at veterangames.com where guys are saying, you know, this is the first thing I've done uh, with my mates sober since leaving the military. Mm. My wife has said I'm a changed person. You know, I have new love for my kids. And we started small last year, but the plan is to grow it and grow it and be an annual event. Yeah, good. So what's, uh, how did you get into, why did you go to the army? Like you just told us off thing that you played tennis yeah, yeah. and you're a rugby union player. To me, that yeah, says yeah. Well, the um, opposite to going into the army. How yeah. did you manage? Uh, Dad was in the army. Right. Uh, and I grew up moving around the place. Uh, and some of the most aspirational men that I met were in the military. While I was in the meantime a fat, unpopular kid at high school and sort of saw that being my path. My mum is here hiding in the background and her dad was actually uh, in the Korean War and in the Vietnam War. Right. And I have his middle name, Graham. Um, five generations of my family, dating back to World War I, were in the military. So there is that sort of DNA flowing through my veins. And my brother's also served as well. Um, so yeah, when you're surrounded by these things, I guess it has that impact on you. Now you've got a Queensland coach here, Queensland legend, and we've got a former coach, one of the New South Wales greatest ever players and captain. Yep. Tell us about leadership. What, what is it? Are you born with it? Can you manufacture it? Everyone's born a leader, but leadership is a skill that you can develop and refine and be applied at the critical point. I say leadership is about being the impact player. It's not needing to be in the front and leading, but it's knowing how and when to follow, understanding your people, your team and what they need, and how you can inject all of yourself authentically to help them go from high performance to elite. <coughs> leadership is a skill that anyone can be trained to, but first and foremost, it comes from knowing who you are at an individual level and your values and then how you can apply that to those to achieve a purpose beyond expectation. I get the feeling you might be in Queensland camp this year. Uh, <laughs> Queensland has my heart, um, Sydney okay, has we'll my soul. Okay, so. we'll just leave that there. <laughs> I'd love the weather up there, but I love the people down here. So You, you just got back from America mm. and you were telling me a lot of your friends were talking about rugby league in Vegas, the Vegas game. Yeah. So it is making an impact amongst Americans. It was so fascinating for me. A LA in America is uh, a spiritual place for me. It's where I first accepted my sexuality, that I was gay, and it's where I have a whole tribe of people who have been there to support me, having never known that I ever was in the military because I had to keep all that a secret. Was that tough coming out, in the, being in the military? Uh, I didn't. I only came out after the military yeah. because I found that Australian society was stuck in this place where we want to define people by these superficial labels. And by this time, I was a major in the 2nd Commander Regiment and I would have been the only openly gay um, man uh, in a r unit full of 400 alpha male meat eaters. <coughs> and it just wasn't relevant. <coughs> I didn't need that personal affirmation. I wanted to be judged on my actions and attitudes, so I chose to push that subordinate to my purpose. So the Vegas. Tell us about rugby league. Yeah, sorry. We're on. Sorry, we're on. Was my fault. No, you're good. Um, I'll talk all day if you let me. So, yeah, we went to Coachella with an amazing tribe and everyone, it is a pilgrimage. You have to do it once in your life. I'll leave it at that. It was so amazing. But I kept running into all these Americans and when they hear my accent saying, oh, you're Aussie, you know, we work in this show in Vegas or this. And there's this whole massive crowd of Aussies that were in Vegas for this rugby league game yeah. and, like, and then we looked at this game and no one's wearing padding and stuff and like you guys are crazy down under <laughs> but um it, it's word of mouth is king and queen and it's having an impact and they love the amount of aussies that came over and partied with them in vegas as well very cool do you think they can make a foothold in america with rugby league absolutely i think americans just love sport i think the biggest part's going to be adapting it into their culture as opposed to us just transplanting our culture I mean, that sort of starts at the universities and whatnot, but they'll come out to see a contest of people smashing themselves against each other. I yeah, think you guys okay. are really on a winning number there. What's next? What's the next, next 10 years? What's next for you? Oh, um, finding love and setting myself up. Um, I've spent a lot of time achieving throughout my life. I've met someone that I'm pretty sure is my person over in LA this last trip, and I'm going to protect and nurture that and figure out what that is. 
uh, and then sort of you know building that balance and growing the veteran games. My aspiration is to take the veteran games to the US because part of rebuilding that community and helping that mental health progression is reuniting with all those people that we deploy with overseas. We deploy with Americans, British, Canadians, Kiwis, but we don't maintain those ties as veterans, so I want to use this as a platform. We'd love to have you at the game Thursday. I know Freddie's off offered the, yeah. the sideline. You'll be down the sideline, you mate. You'll love, love it. Let's do it. Just tell me yeah. what to wear. That's we'd my love biggest it. anxiety. We'd, we'd love to use you. you wear whatever you want. We'd love to use you, use you in the broadcast. Oh, if mate, you're not at it, use you. I'm at your disposal. Coming and watching the footy would be the best way to finish off an Anzac Day, in my opinion. Uh -huh. I just want to say thank you so much for coming in. I hope Anzac Day you get celebrated, not only yourself, but the other returned servicemen and, and yep. women. Yep. And it shouldn't be just for one day because mm. what you do, the sacrifice you and your, your comrades do, gives us our freedom and our way of life. So we should celebrate you every day because you are a true Australian hero. No, I appreciate Thank that, Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me on. Good really on, appreciate mate. it, guys. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. This year, NRL on 9 is your one-stop shop for all footy. That's right, Freddie. Not about the highlights. Action. Seven days a week. Billy and Gus podcast. Get that on your drive on the way home. Immortal behaviour. Grab a seat on the couch for that. And of course, my favourite, Fred in the Oak. The best footy brains, the biggest games. Don't trust the algorithm. Subscribe to NRL on 9 and get all your entertainment there.